uh, have the chief economist with Price Water House Corpus, Andrew Nevin. He joins me live in the studio. Andrew, it's good to have you. Very good Sanso. to be here. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's been a while. I, I, I want us to start quickly with the ministers. The retreat is on now, mm -hmm. and all of them should know their various designation, what portfolio, what ministry you're handling, and all of that. Let's look at Ministry of Finance, budget. What are your expectations from these ministers? I don't know. I'm not going <laughs> to speculate on, on that. I do know... Um, that uh, I think the country expects them to hit the ground running. And the president, uh, presidency's now said many, many times that uh, his number one objective is to list 100 million people out of poverty in the next 10 years. So with that, so much in the public, I think the public can hold him accountable for that. So the question they'll be asking the ministers in finance and budget and planning and everything else is, you know, what are you doing to achieve that goal? So if you think back to the first term, we, we've sat here and said there really no structural changes happened in the economic uh, management of the country. I think now people can demand what are the structural changes that are going to see us start to see a reduction in poverty. Well, indeed, issues around policies should be very, very important here. Now, the stock market has been on a standstill for some time. A lot of losses from that end. So many believe that a lot of policy issues need to be addressed as this guy is coming. What do you think? Well, I, I think that both the domestic investors and foreign investors, they don't want to come right now to Nigeria. I mean, we were quite optimistic uh, maybe two or three years ago that despite the drop in oil prices, we could come out of it more strongly. That hasn't happened. It is still very difficult to, to invest in this country. And I know so many entrepreneurs that want to do things. And when they look at all the barriers, it just takes so much longer and more expensive than it should be because there's still so many barriers, so many different licenses that you need, so many, um, so much complexity. I mean, we've been on this show and we've used the word simplicity. There needs to be a simplification of doing business here. Businessmen are not, I mean, I think sometimes in the public sector they think businessmen are out to take advantage of people. Most of the businessmen that I deal with every day, they want to build a company. They want to deliver a service, but they're being prevented from doing that. And the Nigerians want to buy these services and they want to buy these goods. And, but we're still not getting the investment we need to grow the economy. Indeed, growing the economy. Now let's look at some fundamentals. Figures were out last week and inflation dipped again. And many say it's looking good, but some say it's not yet huru. So what do you make of these figures coming out from the NBS? Well, it's the it's, last few years we've steadily, and we've talked about it, steadily seen inflation come down, the headline NBS number. I think that the NBS does a fantastic job technically. The, the problem is someone... You remember, they're only measuring it in some places, a number of places. They're not measuring everywhere simultaneously. So your inflation rate may be different than, than what, um, what the NBS is saying. But I think that what is more concerning is in this country, at the end of the day, is food inflation. So if people recall what uh, was on the screen uh, when you put it up there, food, food inflation is still over 13%, and that's worrying. Now, of course, if we were producing more food, I think the food prices would, would come down. Inflation would come down. You might even see a reduction in food prices. But there's still barriers, not so much to the food production. There are two big issues I see. One, of course, is the logistics of getting the food from the farm to the table and that the expense of that. But the other thing that's happened is because of the insecurity, a lot of farmers that would farm are not farming, which means that, that we're going to continue to have pressure on food prices. They're not bringing that product to the market. Um, and that's an issue for us. We, we will, I'll, I'll definitely want to touch on this. Central bank projects that one way or the other we will get to single inflation figures anytime this year. Do you see that playing out? Well, I think we've said the same thing for a number of years. If business was easier, it, you could easily bring, you, we would bring down inflation. If it was easier logistically, if we had better infrastructure, the Pebec sort of uh, focus on ease of doing business, if that improved, then inflation would definitely come down. But it's not going to come down through monetary policy. It's going to come down because we make structural reforms that make it easier to run a business, and they don't have so many expenses, so many extra fees, so much time lost uh, through logistical challenges, infrastructure challenges. And now, dipping down to the reality on the ground, uh, a Nigerian just wants food and it's stable and being able to purchase, that's increasing purchasing powers of all, all of this. Now, our population, we st we're still not growing at par when it comes to figures, uh, population growth, and what we have as GDP? No. So, I mean, I think the GDP number comes out in a few weeks yeah. for the second quarter. I'm not sure we can expect anything different, probably around 2% growth. We know that our, uh, our um, uh, population growth is 2.6, 2.7%, so still going backwards. So, but I think, again, having the, the presidency, and of course the central bank also announced it, we needed to have double-digit GDP growth. So that means over 10%. So 
I think that the Nigerian population can ratchet the pressure up on the on the presidency of the federal government and say, you know, when are we going to start to see to see this growth? But I, I will say, I think one thing that we really see is there is a lot of activity um, that maybe is sometimes not apparent at the state level. So, so even though sometimes the structural issues at the na national level, they're not easy to solve. It's a big country, it's a complex country. Um, we see a number of governors just getting on with what they're able to do. They're very focused on investment in their state. They're not waiting for the federal government. They have projects they want people to come into. They're trying to make it easier to do business in their state. They're trying to make it clear they welcome investors on that. I mean, just a few, that, not to name them all, but a few that come to mind are Governor McKinde in, in uh, Oil State. Um, Governor Obaseki in Edo State, uh, Governor Rufai, El Rufai in Kaduna Kaduna State, State. Uh, certainly Ogun State um, is, is all is done well, this governor and the previous governor as well. So I really think that the, we need to see more governors stepping up uh, because as I said, it's not, you know, it's easy to blame the federal government for some of these issues, but the truth is a lot of it requires legislative reform, legal reform, in some cases constitutional reform. It's not a simple matter, so I don't think states can wait for it to be, some of these issues to be addressed at a national level. They need to do what they can. Let's go to the manufacturing uh, sector now, which is very important, particularly at this time when we've signed the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. I know that, that that's, that's now being signed, we put pen to paper. Uh, how well we have the figures still above 50 points, which is the threshold. The figure seems to be looking good, but how well do you think our manufacturing sector can play a role in achieving the positives in the, this trade act? Well, I, I think, again, I mean, there, we see a lot of people that want to manufacture. We want to see, see a lot of the existing manufacturers want to expand. So there's the pent-up supply, if you will, for that. Um, and But they're, they're struggling with some of these issues I mentioned before. And, of course, they're struggling with one other, which is power. So I haven't talked that much the uh, last few times on the show about power, but it really has become an urgent crisis to, to figure out power. And, I mean, I, we, I think, all expected three or four years ago that some of the the uh, teething pains of the privatization would work its way through, and that hasn't been the case. And the vice president came out last week and he said, we need some uh, major reform. He, and he said that himself. So we, I'm not sure it's just tinkering with the tower, power sector at this stage. Um, but of course, you know, one of the problems of cor was that the discos and the whole industry was promised cost-reflective tariffs. That has not materialized yet, and, and so it's very difficult to see investment coming in. But we're not going to, I mean, we have so much pent up manufacturing. Um, if we had power, it would just explode. So, but the, the, I think the focus is on it now. Of course, Siemens and the federal government signed a major agreement. Uh, if you remember, Angela Merkel was here, I think, in last year. Uh, then subsequently, there was a major MOU signed between Siemens and the federal government. Um, and uh, that would be the first time that the country's attracted a major foreign power player to help with sort of deal with these issues. So maybe that's a sign that we're going to move past it. But I mean, every Nigerian is grappling with this. And indeed, if that works, we will have better figures coming from the manufacturing sector, I hope obviously. Because so. investment in power is something to really worry about. L l l let's move on now. Not looking at this uh, new inflation figures in. Do you see any shifts? We are expecting the, uh, the MPC meeting, as usual, to come up. Uh, do you think this can make them loosening? You know, they follow this method of tightening the monetary stance. Are you right. seeing any sign? Is it enough for them to loosen in this? Well, I think, I think I, firstly, I, I, I don't think we expect the tightening in the next, in the meetings next month, about a month away now. Um, they, they, could, they could loosen this one or the next one. I mean, I mean, we have had a dramatic reduction in interest rates. So the, if you look at the, the federal government interest rates, what they're paying on uh, treasury bills, on their longer dated bonds, it's come in, I think, at least 500 basis points from the high. So from that viewpoint, that's going to help our fiscal situation. Um, and inflation is moderated. So, I mean, the bias has to be for the central bank to reduce interest rates at the next meeting. But whether they choose to do it at that meeting or the subsequent meeting, we'll, we'll wait and see. But it's hard to see any reason to raise interest rates at this point. Andrew, Andrew I, I, I need to talk about this. Crude oil prices are also looking very good considering the trade war. Now, let's look at its effect. Like what I read earlier, it's already impacting on other economies. And Nigeria wouldn't be left out, even the continent in its own, uh, in its entirety. What are you thinking? Well, I, so we've said for a number of years, let's let's make sure we take advantage of s higher crude prices, sort of 65 to 75, touched 80, I think. Um, now they're back around 60, a little under 60, which is under the benchmark. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the things going on outside the country are very worrying for, for Nigeria. And um, um, if, we, if we don't get the structural reform, if we get the structural reforms, I think we'll do fine because we'll attract capital. When you think about what's happened, you have, I think, 14 trillion euros of uh, bonds in Europe, which are negative interest rates. So those people are willing to accept less, th you know, not even get their money back uh, by lending it to the government there, right? So if we can create investment opportunities, we'll get some of that money. But just in terms of, of flight to safety, because we're not considered a safe place to invest money, uh, if, the, if the global economy does start to go into a recession or growth slows significantly, you typically have this flight to safety. If we're not considered a, a relatively safe place to ho hold our money, then liquidity is going to get sucked out here. It's going to put a lot of pressure on us, on our interest rates. So that's a big concern. And that the issue of recession is really brewing because it's all over. It's, um, you know, the German market has been down. The effect has been felt all, all across the world. Well, I mean, I think one basic thing is demographics. So you have working age population shrinking in China, Japan, Korea, Germany, Netherlands. So. It's not a big surprise that the economy doesn't grow very fast. So I don't think that this slowdown should have been um, unexpected. But again, I'm, I, I think in Nigeria what's happened is we had a two or three year window. Um, at when oil prices rebounded after the, the lo real low in January 2016 and, and the Naira crashed almost 500, it rebounded. I think the rebound um, was managed well by the CBN, uh, the federal government, the Minister of Finance, very focused on it. But what's happened subsequently was we didn't take advantage of, of that time that we had to do any of these structural changes, as I said. And now we're in a situation where maybe we're going to be dipping back into a recession, global recession, dipping back into lower oil prices, and that's going to create pressure. So in a sense, we've lost time. So you'll go back to where we opened. I mean, tomorrow we should, I'm sorry, on Wednesday we should hear uh, which minister has which portfolio. We hope it lines up with their skill set. But there really is an urgency about this. Uh, I mean, and we cannot keep going on and lose, you know, three and a half, I guess three and a half years to the next election now. We've lost six months since the election. We can't lose the next three and a half years. And I hope that the new cabinet comes out ready to tackle the 100 million poverty issue. 100 million poverty issue. Andrew Nevin, thank you very much. We expect a lot indeed from uh, the couple of ministers that we well, well, let's say I know Risa, by Wednesday we'll be sure who takes what, who takes And of course we also have in Lagos the... Uh, yeah, yeah.